Hi. Hey, Gala. And welcome to another episode of The Ginchiest. We're on a special location. Oh, right outside of our apartment. But it's a nice background, isn't it? Today we are going to be doing a video on the top five. Dan, read your hand. In the shot, Dan. Oh, Lord. <laughs> top five. Misconceptions of people with disabilities. All right, so number five. So number five is that everybody's staring at us all the time. The fact of the matter is, a lot of times people ignore us. When I was in high school, I used to have a locker that was specially built because I couldn't use the standard lockers that were really skinny and built into the wall. There was this locker, but it was really like a wooden box that stuck out from the wall. And the door was where it was at the height of my uh, shoulders because it was easy for me to grab my books at that level. And my head was always right behind the door of the locker. And one time uh, a boy and a girl were running down the hall while I was taking out my books and they didn't see me and they ran right into the door of a locker and it pushed my head uh, over and I, my ears started to bleed and they kept running. They didn't even realize that they, uh, <clears throat> that they hit me. Did they? Yeah, I did it down on getting on around on my legs and knees. More probably out of ignorance, not maliciousness. I don't think that they were purposely coming after me, but uh, the fact that they didn't even notice that they hit me was pretty harsh and I was very shaken. But one of my classmates who we are dedicating this episode to named Lauren Tropauer, she saw what happened and she went with me to the bathroom and helped me clean up my ear. She showed me tremendous kindness that day that I remember to this day, 20 some odd years later. It goes to show you that kindness does very much matter. But let's continue with our countdown. So number four. Four, Dan. Uh. Four. <laughs> this is yours. He probably did a better cannot play for and I didn't think that I could be from my head I was like be general population yeah yeah and now Dan watches both types of sports he watches Paralympics he watches wheelchair basketball he watches standard sports Football, uh -huh. basketball, like the national. Uh, okay, he watches everything. Okay, guys. 
<laughs> Even the scrubbers, which is curling, I think. Anywho, Dan, number three. Number three. Um, With the number three. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Lord, nobody went over this. <laughs> Number three is that people with disabilities are all nice and inspirational. That's a big one, folks. This is not true. People are people. And you're going to find people that woke up on the wrong side of the bed that particular day or been waking up on the wrong side of the bed their entire lives. For many reasons, people turn out the way that they do and act the way that they do. And it's the same way for people with disabilities. There are so many people who are wonderful and inspirational, but just because you find someone who may use a wheelchair or some sort of medical uh, equipment or adaptive equipment, doesn't necessarily mean they're inspirational or that they're fantastic human beings. What are your thoughts on that, Dan? I agree. That people are people. You can be inspirational. You can be mean. Yeah. All right. And, uh, thank you, Dan. Number two. Number two. Oh, we're not talking to Zinky. Okay, no, no. <laughs> That was a bad joke. That was a dad joke. <laughs> so, number two is a big one. And that one is that people with disabilities cannot have kids nor raise them. Which is really untrue. Now, I'm not saying, and I was talking to Dan about this earlier, that we know a slew of uh, parents with disabilities. We, we don't. But Dan knows some more than I do. Mine are more acquaintances. Some bodies of mine are parents. Just like everybody else yeah. They may need to get some adaptive Women, but it can be done. And sometimes, not all you know, parents with disabilities are fantastic, but sometimes just the experience of the kid growing up with a parent who has a disability allows that child to to develop a, a deeper empathy for other people. Expose your kid to uh, as many different types of people as possible and different experiences, it'll just develop them further into uh, empathetic human beings. So what is the number one uh -huh. misconception of people uh -huh. with disabilities? They can't have sex nor do they desire it. Totally false. I don't understand why it persists, but it does. When I first met Dan, okay, and I know his family and friends have watched this, so plug your ears and this will make you uncomfy, but he was quite the player. I mean, hey. Dan knew how to get around when it came to women. Hey. He's doing the whole, like, I don't know, primate male <laughs> strut thing. <laughs> but yes, this persists and it's horrible to to people with disabilities because it is what enforces that feeling of, of less than. Most people desire to have a life partner in a romantic sense. 
they want that experience. And why would having a, a medical condition preclude them from wanting it or feeling it? Uh, well, uh, no, real reason that I started dating when you're beautiful. You have the heart of gold. You are so much as a whip. Thanks. So, and I. I know all my aches were so much and time and all that. But you don't have to justify why you didn't no, choose that day. The reason mm-hmm. I married you is because of shame experience. You I know how hard it is. That's all we got for today, folks. We hope it was helpful. Thank you. Keep it Genji. And thank Love and Love. Thank